In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to whip up some Christmas stockings in no time. And the way you can get this patchwork look done really quickly is by grabbing a five inch stacker. There are 42 five inch squares in this pack, so you could actually make four stockings using one pack of stackers and two yards of a solid fabric. So let's get sewing for Christmas. Here's what we need. Grab a stacker of five inch fabrics. I'm going to be using Holiday Cheer by My Mind's Eye from Riley Blake. It has 42 different fabrics. And it's gonna give us a great variety to make a really cute patchwork front for this stocking. Then we're going to need rotary cutter, mat and ruler, fabric scissors, this free stocking template that you can download, look for the link below the video, and two thirds of a yard of solid fabric. This is gonna make it faster if you just pick one color that you're gonna use for the back and the lining. So let's get started. I have my third of a yard of the red fabric that I'm gonna use for the back and the lining, and we need to cut out three stocking templates. Using a solid fabric versus a print makes this so much easier because you don't have to worry about which direction the stocking is going. If you're going to be making more than one stocking, you don't have to do this next step. I'm gonna put my template down, and then I am going to cut my fabric. Because two thirds of a yard can make four, we can cut out four Four pieces, but since we only need three, I don't want to cut out four and then have an extra sock shaped piece of red fabric. So I'm going to take the second half and I'm just going to cut it in half. Then this piece is going to be extra for your next project. I'm going to put this down. I'm going to layer. So now we are going to be cutting three stockings at the same time. The next thing we need to do is grab some pins, pin this onto the fabric and then cut around with your scissors, rotary cutter, or a combination of the two. We're going to set our three red stocking shapes aside, and we're going to start to play with our stackers. Making your stocking with the, the blocks five inches, just like they come in the pre-cut pack, we only need 10 per stocking, so you could make four stockings with one pre-cut bundle. So it looks like we have two of each print to choose from, just kind of going through here, seeing what we have. So I'm just laying these squares out right on top of the template so that I know how many I need to sew together. Overlap them a little bit so you're allowing for your seam allowances just to get a feel for what this is going to look like. Now we have these two sections down here that are pretty small. So to make this work with 10 squares and be able to fit and, and, and catch all of these little curves, we're gonna take this square and cut it into three pieces. So you're going to piece it here, here, and here. So now that I have this all laid out, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my phone and I'm gonna take a picture of how I have those blocks organized. You don't have to do that step, but I find when you're laying out block, it just makes it easier and quicker to have something for reference. I'm gonna put them right sides together, and then I'm just gonna put a pin on the side that we're going to sew. One thing I love about pre-cuts is that you can get a wide variety of fabrics that are going to coordinate really quickly without having to buy a lot of yardage. I'm gonna fold that one back. I just wanna make sure I put it on the right side, like the top or bottom of this other block. So you'll see how I did that. We're gonna sew this seam, and then this one's gonna go down there, but I folded it back so that we don't catch it in that seam and need our seam ripper. I'm gonna do the same thing on this row. If I'm doing a long row, like for a quilt, I don't do this, but because this is only two or three things together, I do this so I can just sew that, take that pin out, sew that. So let's head to the sewing machine. I'm using a shorter stitch length just so it stays together really nicely. And because we are going to be cutting some of these seams, so I'm using a 2.0 stitch length. Now I have these sewn together, each row sewn together and pressed. The seams pressed, I'll talk about that in a second. Now I'm gonna look at my photo reference and just make sure I have this laid out the way I planned it, which I do. Now we are going to put these two rows together and these two rows together. Then we'll come back and we'll sew this half to this half. So let's move our template. I just wanna show you something about how I press the seams, a little tip. So these are going like this. I pressed this seam, both of them this direction, and this seam, both of them this direction. When I pin them together, these seams are going this way, these are going this way. So you're not gonna have a huge bulky mess right here where that seam meets. So you wanna pay attention as you're pressing to make sure you're doing these seams opposite. It'll give your project 
a better finished look. It'll be a little bit easier to sew over that. And I did the same thing with these. So this one's going this way, this one's going this way. Like these, the t this top row, I press them both out towards the sides and the bottom row, I press them both in towards the center. And when you're pinning these together, you wanna make sure you're matching that seam line so that your patchwork looks nice and lined up and cute. Now you have two options. We can cut this to the template and just leave it like this and it's gonna be quick. Or if you wanna take a little bit longer, you can put this on top of batting and I would just use you know regular quilt batting scrap and you can quilt this together. So it'll have a little bit more dimension and everything like that, but I promised you quick and easy. So we are just going to cut this out and we're gonna use it as is without extra quilting. Now, if you feel pretty confident with the rotary cutter, you can just freehand this instead of using fabric scissors. Just make sure you're holding your template down and go slowly. It's definitely a great skill to have. You might wanna just try it with scrap fabric, draw some curves and just practice cutting. Our next step is to sew the front and back together and the two pieces of the lining together. And we're going to do that at this top edge. So again, because I picked red that really doesn't have a right or wrong side, I'm just going to put these one on top of each other and I'm going to pin along the top and then the, do the same thing for the linings. We're gonna have these together and we're gonna pin and sew across the top. Now we've sewn these together and we've pressed open the seams and voila, the lining now has a wrong side because of the pressed open seam and a right side. So what we're going to do is we're going to put these right side together, lining up these seams and making sure the feet are all going in the same direction. I do like to line it up, especially if you have some patchwork going on with the more detailed side on the top so that you can make sure your seams stay the direction that they're pressed in as you sew. We're gonna pin all the way around and then I wanna show you my little pin trick. We are going to need to leave a few inches open in the lining side, turn this. So what I do is I use different pins. I'm gonna use these black ones just as a visual reminder of, hey, it's time to stop. So I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna stop here, and I'm gonna use these cute Riley Blake pins everywhere else. Because sometimes you just get on a roll and you don't realize you're so close to where you began until you've gotten there. We're going to sew around this with a quarter inch seam, and again, leaving the opening for turning. And because we're going to be sewing on quite a few curves to make this sock shape, we are going to use a pretty sh short stitch length again. So I'm going to be using a 2.0 stitch length. You're just gonna get a better curve when you turn and press it if you have smaller stitches rather than large ones. The next step is to clip the curves, which you can do in a more traditional manner with little scissors. And you can either just clip lots of little clips or you can do triangles. Basically what we need to do is we need to relieve the pressure outside of this stitching line so that when we turn and press it, you get a nice curve. But let me show you my favorite way of doing curves, pinking shears. They're not your least expensive scissors, but I'm telling you they are worth every penny. They are going to create all of those triangles. You just need to go pretty slow. Make sure you don't hit your stitching and you're going to cut along all of your curves. This is a huge, huge time saver and much, much easier on your hands. Two, you don't have to do it along the straight edges, just on the bottoms of each side where everything is curving. Now we're going to turn this right side out through the opening that we left in the lining. Make sure you get these curves pushed out. It's a good idea to have an opening big enough that you can either fit your hand or at least your fingers through so you can use your hands to go down and kind of rub along the seams and help get this open before you take it to the ironing board and press. Okay, now we're gonna take this to the ironing board and press that nice and flat. I always start my top stitching on the back of the stocking and pull up your bobbin thread so you don't get a big weird knot back there. And then just sew around at whatever distance you decide you want to. You could do a quarter inch, you could do an inch, you could do a decorative stitch, whatever you decide. I've also changed my thread to red so that it matches most of the front and the back. And as you get to the seams, try and flatten that out as much as possible so that you don't get a big 
lump on both of the sides. So if you're gonna make some stockings, I would love to know for who and why. Do you make new stockings every year to change with the theme of your decor? Do you make them kind of as gift bags? Do you just add new ones as new people come into your family? Let me know in the comments. I pressed along the top and sewed that hem. Now we need to make a little hanger. And guess where I'm gonna find that fabric from? Right here, we're gonna use the extra piece that came off the toe to make our hanger. So I'm gonna line that up on the grid and I'm going to cut that as wide as I can. So that means two and a quarter inches. And let's see, we're gonna cut this to six and a half inches. So two and a half by six and a half is the size fabric that we are going to use for our loop. We're gonna take our loop fabric, turn it right side down. We're going to press each of the short sides a quarter inch. Now we're gonna fold it in half lengthwise and press. And this is the perfect little project for my quilter's clapper, which is a piece of wood, really easy to hold. Right when I take the iron off, I'm gonna press down. Some of the heat from the fabric is going to come into the wood and it's going to make it stay folded a little bit better. Now we are going to fold each of these raw edges in to that fold we just made. I'm just gonna kind of finger press. I'm gonna try and do this all in one fell swoop because it's not a long piece, so it's manageable. If it was longer, I would press each of these sides first, but I'm gonna do that. Yes, it's gonna work. And now we're gonna press that. And now we're gonna sew right down there to hold that closed. Now we have our stocking and our loop and our optional button. So we're going to fold the loop in half and I like to keep the stitch side towards the outside of my stocking. We're going to take the outside, the top seam that is away from the toe, so at the heel of the foot. We're gonna put it about an inch down. I'm just gonna pin that in place and we're going to sew that on. Putting it in at the end and putting it even over that seam makes it hang the way I like it the best so that you're seeing the loop when you're looking at your stocking straight on. Then if you want to, you can add a decorative little button just to kind of cover where you've sewn. Totally, totally optional. It's gonna look really cute just the way it is. And now your stocking is ready to be hung with care for the holiday season and to await Santa's arrival.